Mircea, you describe yourself as a very early reader. There is a scene that you describe, a very endearing scene. It's you and your mother and a children's book. You also describe your home as a home without books. And it seems that that reality took you to read everything in sight, labels, even an algorithm book. Tell me, is that also the reader that you imagine? Do you write for people who come not from a literary uh, context, or do you write for people who are literary aware, who are sensible, cultivated? Tell me a bit about your reader. Um, my ideal reader is myself. So uh, I think that uh, 99% of the time I write for myself to understand my situation, as Kafka would say. Uh, and um, also, uh, of course, I have a, an inner circle of uh, devoted readers that are similar to me, um, that uh, have the same uh, formula, inner formula that I have. Uh, so uh, I'm not so selfish to write only for myself, but uh, I also write for uh, my, my peers um, who have the same inner encyclopedia that I have, um, uh, as uh, Umberto Eco said. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some of my books can be read by everyone. Um, I'm not at all snobbish. I don't consider that only an elite should read my books. Um, um, in a way, my books are for everyone, uh, for um, the people curious to understand my um, inner motivations um, and to understand um, the, the soul of literature, which consists in, uh, uh, in uh, the combination of words, uh, actually. Uh, so um, I think, uh, Anyone who is really curious uh, to, to read uh, my books uh, can have access to it. Uh, and uh, besides, I write for being loved. I think this is the first motor of my, uh, of my uh, writing. Uh, I write for being understood, for being loved, for being, uh, um, well, uh, for becoming a part of uh, uh, my readers, of my readers' uh, uh, um, memory and life, and for changing them. Thank you. It's very curious to accept that you're writing for being loved, not because it's something strange. I think it's in the beginning of every art expression, artistic expression. But when you mentioned it, I was curious because I wanted to know who loves you because of your literature? Um, for a writer, it's more difficult to find out uh, who loves you and who loves you not. For example, for an actor, it's different. Um, an actor is applauded. Mm -hmm. is, um, um, uh, it, he uh, or she gets uh, cheers from the public. So uh, uh, an actor finds out immediately who loves him and who loves his art. But it's not the same for a writer. A writer very seldom finds this uh, out because uh, not uh, um, the majority of the readers are eager to express their feelings towards, uh, towards the, the um, writer. I think uh, from this point of view, the best, uh, uh, the best uh, thing that I, uh, I read uh, was from Salinger. Um, if you remember that uh, um, Holden Caulfield said that uh, he can tell uh, what uh, writer he loves because after reading uh, his book, he wanted to call uh, the writer on the telephone. So if uh, he didn't feel this need to call him on the telephone, the writer was not good. So it's a, it's a relationship of friendship 
and love and uh, trust between the writer and the reader because actually the writer and the reader make the book. They make the book together. Uh, not only the writer makes the book, but uh, in a sort of a joint venture with each and every reader. So it's, it's uh, uh, easy to understand that no reader reads the same book like another reader. And when you describe yourself as coming from a modest background, the picture of this house with no books, and yet we find a very accomplished writer after that you know, infancy, uh, do you feel that you represent a certain social class or a certain social, uh, social context, or is your writing uh, an, an oeuvre that was able to transcend the, the limits of, of class. No, I mean, when I was a child, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you, when I was a child I had no uh, um, image of um, our society as being uh, made out of classes uh, or things like that. Everybody was the same for me. Uh, so I lived in a very poor neighborhood uh, and I thought that was the world. For me, that was the world. Uh, I didn't know any other, other world. Um, till I was uh, 14 or 15, I thought every, everyone had the same kind of life. Everyone had to struggle for a living. Um, um, and besides, uh, that uh, world was, in my, in, in my mind, it was a beautiful one. Uh, and even now I, I think of it like a beautiful one, not an ugly one, not a, a, a world that suffers, but a picturesque world. Uh, um, everything was very popular. Mm -hmm. The people helped each other, you know. Um, uh, everybody each Sunday went to the stadium to watch football. Everybody went to public gardens to, to see movies. Uh, and so on. Uh, the people, um, uh, even in the blocks of apartments, went to each other to borrow things, uh, wheat, uh, oil, uh, everything that missed uh, from their, uh, uh, their house. And everybody um, shared everything with, uh, with the others. It was a very nice world, in a way, um, despite its poverty and uh, um, its, uh, well, uh, um, despite the dicta dictatorship that we had by that time. In the eyes of the child, uh, the, the dictation, dicta dictatorship uh, was absent. Uh, I thought it was the normality by that time. And about the books that my uh, family had, it was uh, like that. Uh, they didn't buy books in uh, bookstores. Um, when my father got the money from his job, uh, in a certain day of, of the month, uh, there was a, a stand of, of books uh, nearby. Uh, so uh, they, when they couldn't uh, get them the, the exact sum of money, they gave them books mm. instead. If they wanted to complete the money uh, uh, the, the workers uh, get got. So my father. Um, almost each month, came home with a book. Um, the books were very, very random, uh, all kinds of books. Uh, when I was uh, six, uh, I think I had about 12 books in my house. And I knew them as uh, other boys knew their uh, uh, little toys, uh, little cars, uh, and I don't know what. I, I was playing with books, even before uh, uh, I could read them. Mm. I was fascinated with books. I was uh, looking, uh, browsing through them uh, to find uh, illustrations, uh, photos, and things like that. It was a, a, a rather picturesque and um, moving part of my life, like in Fellini, you know? Um, like, um, it was a sort of a um, déjà vu uh, feeling with that, uh, that period. And before the Soviet Union collapsed and the whole landscape, political landscape of Europe changed, you already had published some books of poetry. 
-hmm. You were even recognized in, I think it was 1984, by mm -hmm. the Romanian Union yeah. of Writers. And uh, what happened to your writing after that political uh, landscape change? Did something change also in your, uh, in your aesthetics, in your preoccupations, in your own mm -hmm. identity? Well, so, sometime I joked saying that uh, a simple revolution cannot change my style. So, uh, but it's some truth in it. Uh, my previous books uh, are exactly the same like the following books. Um, uh, the revolution uh, didn't change my, uh, my way of writing, my way of uh, uh, understanding literature. The, the books that I published during the dictatorship, during the 80s, um, are absolutely as, uh, um, as uh, um, harsh and uh, um, as uh, courageous uh, like, the, like uh, they followed after the revolution. Um, but the price uh, that I had to pay was very uh, high, was very high. All my books were very uh, strongly uh, censored by the censorship. Uh, they were mutilated actually by the censorship. Uh, in each of my books, uh, they cut out at least 50 pages. Uh, from uh, my poems and from my uh, uh, short stories, um, for example, from uh, my nostalgia, my first book of, uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, um, of, of stories, um, one of the stories, one of the five stories is absolutely absent, uh, was taken out, and uh, the other four were mutilated by the censorship. Not even the title, was uh, um, good enough for them. They changed the title from Nostalgia to The Dream. <laughs> and my, the first version was called The Dream. This is because uh, the great uh, Russian uh, 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 movie director, uh, Andrei Tarkovsky, Tarkovsky yes. just defected to Italy in that period and made a movie called Nostalgia, Nostalgia, oh. actually. So. Uh, even this word was forbidden in Romania. You couldn't use uh, the word as a title for a book. So uh, by that time, as I said before, each and every book was censored. For example, um, Umberto Eco came to Romania in the 80s, and the Writers Union received him as a pop star, of course, uh, but uh, when uh, he was, uh, when he had an event with uh, the Romanian writers, one of my colleagues, a very young writer, just stood up and addressed to him and said, uh, do you know, Mr. Echo, that 30 pages from your, uh, the name of the rose were out from, uh, were <laughs> put out from your book? And Echo was very, very surprised and said, but why? Why? My book is about medieval times. Uh, why should they uh, have uh, taken them out? And my colleague explained, even, even the cooking books in, uh, in Romania are censored, even the books for children. So the censors had to take out pages and uh, chapters from all the books that were published mm. by Romanian writers or by foreign writers. Yes, it seems that censors have a heightened sense of imagination, more uh, than normal readers. <laughs> well, uh, the censors were part of, uh, of the problem, in <laughs> a way. Most of them were themselves writers. Mm. They were writers and they uh, wanted to, to be important in, in, in the, in the uh, literary world. So they invited uh, other writers, uh, to drink a coffee together and to negotiate. And they, sometimes some of them negotiated with, uh, with the writers and just, just to save their books. So not all the censors were uh, evil. Some of them made compromises. And uh, many books were published because of those compromises. For example, uh, some of the censors told you 
uh, that you should add to your book some 20 or 30 pages that you actually you don't want to be <laughs> published in that book. So they could show that they did their job and put them out, oh. you know? Uh, so things are much more com complicated than uh, the people would think. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about nostalgia, mm -hmm. uh, reading your work, I find that uh, Bucharest is not only your native city, but it's also a character in many of, of your writing, even, yeah. even sometimes in your poems. It, it comes out as a character. It's like a person, it has personality, it's filled with nostalgia, yeah. longing at times. So I want to know if there is a distance between the city you've created in your literature and the real city in which you live. Mm -hmm. um, Bucharest uh, evolved in a way in my books, in the history of my books. Uh, at first in my books of uh, poetry, um, it was presented like a splendid city, like a city of miracles, like a city full of light, full, mm. full of sp sparklings, full of, uh, like a champagne, you know? Uh, just because I thought it, it was like that. I never traveled uh, abroad. Uh, I could, uh, that I, I, I thought that I uh, will never travel, so I had no comparison uh, with some other cities in the world. So um, uh, a long time I thought Bucharest was really um, a splendid city, a wonderful city. And it appears like that in my poems. In my poems, um, which I wrote till I was 30, uh, Bucharest is, uh, is, is the city where I, loved, where I loved to live. But after that, uh, this image eroded uh, step by step. In uh, Orbitor, it is still a, a, a sort of an alter ego, a sort of a, as you said, um, um, a character, a sort of a character. Um, by that time, uh, I was uh, jealous uh, uh, on um, Dostoevsky, for example, because he had St. Petersburg, on Joyce, because he had uh, 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 Dublin, uh, um, Darrell had Alexandria, Borges had, had uh, Buenos Aires, Aires, and I wanted to have a, a city of my own. Um, and uh, I described Bucharest by that time, uh, making the first corrections to, his Im to its image. So I started to modify, to change the perspectives, uh, to um, create uh, anamorphosis. Of this, uh, of this city. So in, uh, uh, in Orbitor, I mean in uh, Blinding, or Segador as you translated it, uh, Bucharest is not Bucharest anymore. It's more a creation of my, uh, of my uh, own. Um, sometimes I said that Bucharest uh, doesn't uh, breathe under, under the, the sky, but under my skull, under my skull. So it became an inner, city, an imaginary city. And uh, its involution, as I would describe it, continues in, um, in Solenoid, where Bucharest is completely, completely deprived, uh, undressed of its uh, aura. Uh, it, becomes, uh, it becomes uh, a city uh, of a uh, terrible sadness. Uh, I describe it as the, the saddest th city in the world. Um, it's um, completely reconstructed. Uh, it's uh, uh, made out uh, of um, um, iron and, uh, um, and plaster. So it's a combination of um, um, industrial architecture and absurd um, um, plaster decoration, mm -hmm. angels and uh, other mythological characters. Uh, so uh, um, I um, tried to create a, a sort of a steampunk uh, city, you know? Uh, 
very much uh, uh, distant from uh, what Bucharest really is. And uh, um, its uh, disintegration ends in uh, one of my books that is not uh, yet translated into Spanish, uh, Melancholia, where Bucharest simply disappears. It simply disappears. Melancholia has no trace of uh, locali localization. It's like a, a fairy tale. Um, it happens nowhere um, and in no time. Um, this is why um, I love it so much. I love so much this, this, uh, this uh, book, which is the most poetic of my books that I, I have written so far. I see. Mm -hmm. And something about Orbitor, El Segador. Mm -hmm. The three volumes. It's not only that it's a long, <laughs> it's a long narrative, but it has an internal length, an internal width. It, it, it moves towards expansion always. Mm. And I was thinking as I went through two of those volumes that perhaps with such a project, you are now in a minority. Who else is doing this, you know, these writing projects with so much width? I thought about, you know, recently Carl Uwe Nausgaard, for example. Mm -hmm. But beyond him, there are some names, but not many. We are now in an era of immediacy, yeah. uh, of everything must be concise and short, and everyone gets anxious. If not, then how? Do you feel comfortable with that, with that width? How did you achieve that? How did you, how did you propose that? Well, there are some people who um, share the same maximalist program, I would say, um, that is visible in uh, Segador. Uh, when I started to write it, um, I didn't compare myself with anyone. Um, I just wanted to write uh, a book in the image of myself. Uh, so I wrote this book just by writing it, without uh, thinking too much, uh, without planning, without uh, um, a previous work, without um, documentation and things like that. It um, poured from my uh, uh, imagination and memory in a natural way. Uh, so one day I just started writing and never stopped till 14 years. So I wrote for 14 years uh, the three volumes of this book, which is a triptych actually. It's a triptych like uh, the, the, the ones uh, usually in a painting, mm -hmm. in the painting like the Retable de Gand uh, by Bruegel and so on. Um, and I wanted to do a real piece of art, a real piece of art. It's the most aesthetic of my books, um, describing everything I know about this world, um, starting with my personal history uh, and ending in the history of anything, uh, history of the, the universe, um, and having all the registers from, uh, I, uh, once I said, from scatologic to eschatologic. Mm. So uh, a big arch uh, um, unifying uh, the deepest uh, and uh, most disgusting uh, features of humanity, the, the hell, the, the inferno of, hum of humanity, till the paradise. Um, when I started to write it, I had the only two things in my mind. <coughs> that I, the first is that I should write uh, over 1,000 pages, and the second, the second that this book, that I didn't know anything about, uh, should have the name Orbitor. Uh, I started only with these two things, and everything was then was achieved by simply writing, simply writing without any plan, um, and uh, uh, without editing. So uh, Orbitor, although it's uh, 1,500 pages long, 
it has no page teared from it, no uh, words uh, 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 covered with ink, nothing. Uh, I have I, I wrote it by hand, of course, in three big uh, uh, notebooks. I have them at home, and uh, if you saw them, you would believe it. Uh, but uh, very few people uh, is okay. ready to believe it. So it's a, um, a, a book written from the first word to, to the last word from a single uh, line of ink, let, let us say. Um, but, okay, so you wrote it by hand. Yeah. And you knew that you wanted to achieve the thousand pages mark. Yes. And it is a, a work that took you 14, 14 years. And you yourself, because you were born in 1956, mm -hmm. it's not that you're old, but you have lived many different worlds. Your country's history and that region of the world and the world as a whole has changed many mm -hmm. times. So isn't this a reflection or an exercise of changing the notion of time for the reader now that, you know, who reads a thousand, like, there are not many people who want to read a thousand pages. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that when they get to Orbitor, they will do it. It is very mm -hmm. aesthetic, it is very, it is very challenging also, mm -hmm. very re rewarding too, but, but in it lies a challenge towards time. I'm thinking mm. about you writing word yeah. by word by hand. That, that took a physical effort. Well, there are two things uh, here. The first is that I'm very used to, to, very much used to writing by hand because my most important work is my journal. Uh, I wrote a journal for 50 years and um, it's a overwhelmingly complicated uh, um, writing. It's like writing on my, my skin, actually. It's, or it's like an interview, a long interview that I have taken to myself for 50 years. Um, and uh, it's, it's the trunk of my, uh, my tree. Um, the other um, books of mine are like branches and like uh, the fruits of the tree. Uh, but journal is fundamental for my writing, is in, in the center of my writing. And uh, of course I have written my journal by hand all the time. So I have this long practice of 50 years writing by hand, uh, which, is, um, which uh, is a constant in my uh, life and in my work. I can count on it. Uh, I love to write by hand and I uh, have a different feeling when I write by hand and when I write um, on the computer or, or on the typewriter, for example. Mm -hmm. My poems were written on the typewriter. And after that, uh, um, I bought my first computer in the, at, the last, at, at the, the end of the 80s and I, I uh, shifted to the, to the computer. And some of my, my books were written on the computers on the computer, but uh, um, Orbitor and Solenoid are written by hand. So, uh, uh, and I think they are uh, maybe the books that will remain from my, uh, my uh, uh, modest work. Um, I, uh, and about the length of the, of, uh, the book, I don't care. I don't care about it. I, I will not ask a reader uh, what kind of a book uh, uh, she or he wants from me. Uh, <laughs> this is what I decide. Uh, the length of a book is, a, is actually um, a stylistic feature, um, like a metaphor, for example, because uh, uh, a book cannot have any length. Uh, the book itself dictates how long it should be. Um, there are things that you can say in a poem, and there are other things that you, you can say in, in a very long uh, novel. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sound that is given by uh, a vi violin, 
another sound given by a viola, another sound given, given by a cello, mm -hmm. for example. And uh, it's, 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 it's not, uh, they are not replaceable. Uh, you cannot uh, sing uh, um, the notes for, uh, for a uh, violin uh, on a cello. Um, each one has its, its mm. register. So I used uh, a very big resonance uh, box for my novels because they have to be, they had to be uh, grave in their sound, uh, um, a grave sound, a very strong uh, and low sound, you know? And, and tell me, what would be that case of resonance in a novel? The length of the, the, length. the novel, okay. yes. Um, imagine that uh, uh, War and Peace mm -hmm. would be 40 pages. <laughs> it, Very would, short war. it wouldn't be War and Peace, <laughs> yeah, and so on. Yes, and you were telling us that you worked for a long time as a political journalist. And uh, thanks to this job, you have a great collection of enemies. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what part of political life is evident in your writing and what part of the political experience is there throbbing but not really evident in your writing? Yes, I published several uh, books of, um, which are collections of articles, of political articles, against um, important and powerful people from uh, the politics uh, and economic life of my country. But I also uh, um, have a political uh, trend in my uh, books of imagination. For example, uh, the most political book that has been ever written after the Romanian Revolution, I think it's uh, the third part of my trilogy of Segador, mm -hmm. which is extremely political, which is a sort of a uh, CAT scanning mm -hmm. of, um, CAT scanning of mm -hmm. uh, uh, the whole communist per period in Romania and of uh, the Romanian Revolution. Um, and uh, because uh, it was a, such, a, such a powerful political vision there, um, the book uh, is my only book which is written like a satire. It's a satire. It's a swift-like satire, um, where um, I used um, the most uh, um, harsh um, images, uh, words. Um, I used the grotesque. I used the parody. I used the uh, satire and so on. Uh, for punishing the people who stole my youth. This was what I did in, uh, in that book. Um, and uh, I think it was very good that I wrote a book of this kind, because uh, otherwise uh, uh, the, the people who helped the dictatorship would uh, have been happy now. Okay, can you explain that? In what yes. sense would they be happy now? They would be happy now because they would uh, uh, have been unpunished. Unpunished. Uh, 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 literature usually doesn't punish anyone, but sometimes, in some circumstances, I think it's a, a good thing, a good thing to write against the, the enemies of your country, of your literature, of your life, mm. of, of your youth. I was, I was wondering if that concept of, of purity, in, of, of, of the writer, of what the writer should be, like with no obligations, but that of craft, or no obligations, but that of writing and going forth with a book, is it an, an utopian view, an archetypal figure, or is it a model, a normal model that any young writer can or must aspire? Well, um, uh, 
it's, it's a long discussion here, it's a long debate. Uh, should um, a piece of art be um, dominated only by the inner laws of that art? So uh, should a piece of art um, will only continue the um, uh, history of that art? Um, or should it uh, reflect something from uh, the problems of the world? Uh, it's a, a long and continuing story. Uh, there are arguments for uh, the pure art, and there are arguments for the en engaged, let's say, uh, art. Um, uh, and I think each and every period in the history of the arts had this debate. What should a writer do? Uh, should he or she um, um, embrace the um, uh, beauty, the beauty and the um, purity of lines of um, their uh, um, literature, for example, in our case, or poetry and so on? Or should they protest in a way against um, the injustices uh, that happened, uh, e happen everywhere. Um, there is no answer, in my opinion. Some writers are pu purists, some other writers are uh, fighters. Um, it depends on, m mostly depends on who those writers are, what are their inner formula, what uh, is their character, what do they see um, and where do they look? Um, do they look mostly inside of themselves or outside? Um, there are um, writers like um, Kafka who wasn't uh, directly uh, involved in uh, his world, in the, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, objective world um, uh, around him. And there are writers like Solzhenitsyn who was a great uh, fighter for um, human, the human dignity. Uh, I think this is uh, what makes art so uh, wonderful, mm. the diversity, the diversity of the art. Um, I wouldn't uh, condemn any kind of art, uh, as far as it remains art. Um, some uh, writers uh, uh, are, in a way, some writers are otherwise, but uh, what is important is that their, um, their uh, um, literature is still readable. Um, do not uh, change into newspaper articles or other things like that. So uh, art should have its in independence in a way, but sometimes it could also borrow things from outside, from politics, from uh, um, uh, human rights, from um, uh, gender things, from, um, I don't know, from everything that make our lives so complex and sometimes so uh, hard to endure, mm. in a way. Well, the purist and the fighter are both models of artists that share one thing, certainty. Mm -hmm. They're both certain of yeah. what they're doing and their goals. How do you regard yourself as a writer? Do you find, do you regard yourself as somebody who is more full of certainty or is, or is your composition more made of doubts. <laughs> it's so good to have certainties, said Kafka, <laughs> who was uh, condemned to have none. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think, uh, I don't really think of these, uh, these things. I, I, I just write, I just mm -hmm. write. I, I, I'm not a master of my writing. Uh, I'm a slave of my writing. Uh, not. It, it is not I who decide uh, my subjects, uh, my, um, um, I don't know, my plots uh, and so on. It's my mind. It's my mind who does it. 
I just, um, well, put an accent here or there, but uh, usually I, I trust my mind. It's a, it's a thing of faith, having faith in, uh, in your inner aptitude of writing. Um, so I, I don't care. I wrote all kinds of things, all kinds of things in, in all kinds of manners. What's important is to be um, honest with myself in each and every writing. Uh, if I write um, a humoristic uh, piece, I want to have humor there. I don't want to um, um, uh, fight against uh, the injustice. Mm -hmm. When I write um, a book about uh, um, the tragedy of being a human being, I don't think uh, that uh, it's a political thing. I'm writing, I'm just writing about uh, that topic. Uh, so I'm not uh, the one who dictates in uh, my modest uh, work. Someone else dictates. Some, some inner power, uh, which is for me, uh, very important. I don't think there are many writers now or artists who still believe in, in uh, inspiration. But I do, I do believe. I do believe in, inspira in inspiration and I would be nothing without mm -hmm. feeling inspired. It's, it's, it's like um, um, a religious thing, you know? For me, a writer is like a prophet. His voice is not his one. Um, it's 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 like a, um, a god speaking through the the mouth of a, an oracle. It's something like that. It's something like that. Um, so uh, this is why uh, you you have to relax, like the surrealist said, to to um, create a, a poem. For example, you, you should. Just relax and let your inner voice speak mm. without any censorship, without self-censorship. And uh, if you have inner substance, this inner substance would, would flow like a lava from you. And I think this is the real and sincere literature.